Welcome everybody. This is the very last meeting for this year of the Game Development Club. Now, some of you may have came in at the very end, but nonetheless, welcome to our club, especially for a couple of younger members who are actually coming in as incoming freshmen next semester. So thank you for finding us and joining us today. So usually we have end of the, we usually at the end of the year, we show off the projects that we've made this semester. The interesting challenge was we made you guys do it to a theme and you had less time than usual because in the beginning it was all prep for this very moment. And we're very excited to have everybody here today. So remember this Friday, whether you're very new to the club or you've been here for years, it's gonna be our end of the year banquet. It's gonna be a little different. We're not gonna have free food or, well, we'll have pizza emojis. So that's pizza, uh, pizza emojis. So that will be fun. We're also still gonna have a giveaway prizes. We're gonna have a bunch of games going on. We're still gonna do our traditional semesterly guess that anime theme song contest. No one's sending a pack of Red Bull. Ah, dog! You kicked me! And the chair, you scratched it! So every semester we have an Guess That Anime theme song and it's going to be great because we'll be giving away a lot of different prizes. We've got games, we've got game developer packs, we've got much, much more. Who knows, maybe we'll make you even sing the song for extra bonus points. And then next Saturday, we'll be doing Autograph the Dog. Maybe, I don't know. I gotta figure out how much, how much it takes to mail something, how much it takes to um, maybe like mass mail everybody picture of Doge with a signature or something, paw print. Would you like that, Karina? You'll be famous. Even after my, my year of presidency. And another thing as well. So Friday will be the official, official date when our new board becomes our actual e-board. Technically the end of school is next Friday, the end of finals. However, at the end of the school year, it is tradition that the new board becomes e-board and Sam McCannerinag is not here today, but she will be your president. We have Tony as your vice president for next year. Lorenzo is going to be your, is going to be your treasurer and Lawrence will be your secretary. So congrats to them once again. Next Saturday, we'll be having a Valorant game contest. It's gonna be a tournament of who truly is the top fragger and who is the losing bottom frag. We're gonna see who can ace those headshots and who's going to miss all those kills. You mean who's a scrub? Well, I don't wanna say that, but yes. Cause, cause you know, this is TLC. We ain't got no scrubs here. So, Next Saturday, the competition is going to be at 5 p.m. You guys can have up to five people per team. And we'll be sending out a Google form later today for that frag comp. Now, if we have a lot of people who are interested, we'll push the competition back so you guys have more time to prepare. And you will also be like getting ready, having fun. And we're going to see who's the best. Now, Will you be competing too, or? Yeah, I will be competing too. I'll, but the thing is, if if new and or current e-board, current officers as well, we will be, You. the only thing is you can only have one other e-board or officer on your team and the rest have to be other people. That's it. That's the same going for new board. So it has to be one other person. It can be one other person from e-board or officer. You don't have to have them, but
but everybody else has to be like different people because we don't want like new board ganging up on everyone. So like you, can have, you can have uh, one, a team of either one, like uh, uh, one e board member plus yeah, you one if you're an e board two... member plus three random people. Wait, three? I thought teams were of five. Or, oh, five. Okay. Because Valorant is five. Okay, yeah, sorry. And then grand prize. Packer Red Bull. And then plus a mouse. A pretty Poggers mouse, too. So that... Well, not a mouse. Uh, it's going to be a mouse training game. Otherwise known as Overwatch. You'll get... Each team member will get a free copy of Overwatch. And bragging rights. So you like already a have special Overwatch, role. we'll figure something out. So, so like the winners will get a special role or something? Winners get a little, will get bragging rights, special role, and a free game of Overwatch. If you already have Overwatch, uh, we'll, th we'll think of something else for your other prize alternative. And then Doge. You get to have a cool picture of Doge. Does anybody have any questions about the competition? So the competition will be starting at 5 p.m. next Saturday. So later today, we'll be releasing our Google form for that. And make sure you guys sign up by the very last minute, 4 p.m. Friday. So is it CPP only? No, it can be anyone. I'm going to say just to bar it, anyone 23 years and less. And they have to be at least a senior in high school currently. Indeed, Megapog. And now, without further ado, yeah, other people from college, but they have to be from another college. So they will have to provide their school email. All right, without further ado, Let's move on to our game projects. So we had three wonderful teams this year who have created wonderful games around the theme of quarantine. And it was a really interesting thing. Yes, Daniel? Was it, I, I forget, I thought it was containment, but maybe it was containment. I think containment. it's containment, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the theme was containment and it just, I was going to say it comes in line with our, with what's going on with quarantine and it's a new experience for everybody to be online. And I know we have a lot of interesting games which will be really exciting to see and play. So we're going to be showcasing our demos today and we're going to be starting off with team one, which is Lawrence and Jonah. Hey everyone. So, uh, me and Jonah were uh, co-leads for on this project, and uh, we had uh, Raymond Wong, uh, yeah, Raymond Wong, uh, Taehan Yoon, uh, Corey and Ambu, and Brad. Uh, wait, I forgot his, I forgot his last name. Uh, yeah, so um, all of them, <laughs> all of us uh, worked together on this project, and it was a lot of fun working with them. They were all super cool teammates. Uh, so here is our. Let me open up the game. So here is our game. Originally, we were gonna go for the uh, a zombie, uh, a zombie containment uh, game, but then we ended up changing it to the player is being contained in a labyrinth. So we changed the name to a labyrinth run. It's a, it has roguelike elements where uh, the player will get random uh, power ups and uh, the level the the order of the levels are switched up every time the player goes through it. Let me stream my screen. So here we have the menu. The menu design and all the UI elements were created by Jonah. And all of the music is, is the music playing? Uh, I don't think we can hear it. You can't hear it. Uh, did you enable audio? I, I don't hear start? it. Can you guys hear it now? 
Yeah. There, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, and all of the music was created by uh, Tehan. And we had, and Raymond uh, worked on a lot of the models uh, along with Brad. And Corey helped, uh, Corey created a lot of the movement mechanics. And I worked on uh, some of the, uh, me and Jonah worked on some of the shooting and the enemies. Breaking you out, knocked down some guards, left you with a little gift. Take this to defend yourself. Drop in some ice. So we added the first scene, kind of like, kind of is the idea of like how the original Legend of Zelda has like that scene where you get the sword. So it like kind of just adds more context to. I guess what's going on. So yeah, you shoot the boxes to get rid of uh, stuff, and then you have to defeat all. Frick. Uh, you have to defeat all of the enemies in the room to move on to the next room. Okay, so yeah, if you lose, it's a restart, hey, and then you can start off. Breaking you out, knocked down some guards, and left you with a drop in some items. The doors are opening. And then you can get like different power-ups here. Drop in some items. Oh shoot. Right okay. Um. Uh, we have a question in chat oh, because let me there's some lag going on. Is oh. the game supposed to be that slow, or is it just lagging from the video connection? I th I think it's lagging from your guys's. Let me try and restream it. All right. Uh, yeah. So the one way to work around that is to do like say with OBS, you can treat it like a virtual camera, and then Zoom seems to handle that just fine. Okay. Uh, it, it just kind of like that's you know it's not something that's easy to just like set up if you haven't yet but okay um, uh i have i have obs so i can probably try and do that i think let me see so yeah. tell us about your the whole game process so did you have any trouble did you run into any issues and then like what's the most exciting part about working with this game so uh for for me uh Probably one of the more difficult parts was figuring out the enemy AI, because uh, at first I wasn't like that like aware of like the nav mesh uh, system. So uh, when I was when I was doing it, I tried to find uh, like videos on like uh, one without the nav mesh uh, system. But then it was also like trying to implement the animations to like work properly, and uh, having the systems work. Because like some of it is like the enemies need to like stay in position and then try and hit you but uh i had a i had some trouble trying to figure out how to do that but eventually i was able to do it and then if uh other teammates want to share their experiences that would be cool yeah let's hear from jonah i know Tayan is in the chat is corey here today yeah I, I see i think everyone except brad could make it so Basically, I want to work more on the UI, so I added three things. I revamped the menu to look a little more, to give it a lot more room than before. Like the blue might be a graphic or moving image or still. And then we have three slides. I um, I added a, a play button for for maybe a, another stage because we were we were talking about a prison level and we were also talking about a caved in level. And then lastly, I added a map page for if we, if possible, we have, we can put all the rooms of a map or possibly even like a default map. And uh, that's most of the, that's most of all I did for now. Cool. Let's see. Taeyeon, you want to describe your experience? Can you guys hear me? 
Yes. We hear you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mostly worked on the music, which was a lot of fun. And also I did some voice acting too. I didn't with, hear anything, uh, any voice lines in the game. I heard a lot of your sound design though. Oh, there was some voice lines. There was, there was in, voice in, lines in. at the intro. Yeah. You know, here, take this. Dangerous to go alone. Yeah, and then <laughs> um, I also, yeah, it was kind of fun, like, thinking of, like, oh, what kind of music goes well with, like, you know, shoot em up containment games, like, and, and then also I worked on the pistol script as well. It was kind of difficult at first because I wasn't used to, like, using Unity and stuff, but I got used to it and was able to solve that, so it's pretty nice. All right, so let's also hear from Raymond and and then Corey. So Raymond? Hi, I worked on a lot of the models and I believe a handful of levels. Let me pull them up in Blender really quickly if I can find them. There they are. So I based the models off of uh, pixel art that I believe it was Jonah sent me. And I kind of just converted them into a 3D state where certain pixels are pointing out and others are indented in. Um, this one is a shield or armor power up. We also have health pack was kind of not based off of any pixel work, but stuff like stamina actually uses the original image file, as you can see on the left, as the uh, texture. And that kind of allows us to keep the colors the same, I guess, as we transfer across machines. What else do we have? We have a small ammo looking thing over here. And that's mostly it. A lot of these are uh, simply 3D versions of the pixel art you see on the left. Thank you. And then lastly, Corey. Uh, yeah, so I pretty much entirely worked on uh, scripts. Uh, I did the movement scripts, and then I also worked on the shotgun script. Uh, I mean, it was it was a pretty good time. Uh, I'm not very familiar with C Sharp, which from what I understand is what most of this is done in. Um, and that, that was kind of challenging, but uh, it just became sort of a process of uh, being given a tutorial and then looking for a tutorial and finding another tutorial and sort of piecing everything together to uh, make something that works. I can actually show just real quick. Let me see. So this is just sort of little test environment that I wound up creating. Uh, it's really simple, but it let me, uh, early on, it let me test whether or not gravity was working and let me test how the double jump and dash was working. I have this giant block that looks like a, well, it doesn't look like anything, but it acts like a gun, but I couldn't tell if the gun was working because I couldn't get the effects working. I think it works in game. I never actually got to double check that. Um, but yeah, this is this was just mostly what I was doing, just working on the scripts for movement and the shotgun. It was a pretty good time, but yeah, it was good. All right. Thank you so much guys for your game. It's really cool. We don't get a lot of um, we don't get a lot of, of 3D shooters in this club, so it's really nice to see a difference. So next up, we have Tony's team, which is the very cool B movie game. Tony, you here? You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. You hear me? Okay. Or is it? It's a bit it's muffled. A, yeah. We hold on. Let me try this. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. Uh, so my team was mostly, it was, um, I think, Peter and Victor, right? I don't think, I don't know if anyone else from my team is here. But, um, hello. Yeah, so we created, I'm here too. Yeah, you guys can say hello. So mostly, honestly, it was Victor made most of the game. He really worked hard on this and it came out amazing. So I'm about to share it right now. So this is called B Simulator, Simulator or Eye of the Beholder, whatever, or the B Movie game. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so it's basically it's a puzzle game. I don't know, Victor, would you like to share most of it while I'll just be presenting it? Yeah, yeah, sure. You go for it. <sighs> okay. And then Peter put in the music as well. And so that'll play as soon as I start it. So uh, <clears throat> the gist of the bee simulator is that you have that central like light brown sort of tile in the middle. And once you add a bee in, the neighboring tiles will open up and you can see those three circles there. Those are honey tiles. So the objective is to get a bee onto all those tiles in order to clear the level. It starts off very simple, but uh, as we progress, I think it gets uh, a little trickier. So I think at some point, yeah, this is yeah, this is another level where we uh, try to. Yeah, it's another level where we uh, demonstrate the sort of um, chain mechanic. So, yeah, that works. Oh, we love jazz. So, like in here, in this level, we uh, show off the big B. So once you slot him in, he fills up multiple tiles. So. This is where we start to introduce the sort of jigsaw nature of this game where you make just very um, kind of complicated combinations of bees together using different shapes and sizes. And as he's demonstrating here, there are multiple solutions to these puzzles. So it's, it's rather open-ended for the player to experiment with. This is another uh, example of a of a like a multi-tier B. This one is just I think this is uh, internally called Big Wing. <laughs> uh, the design for this was inspired by like one of Peter's uh, concept arts that he uh, posted in uh, our private channel. Yeah. All right, so. Victor, what was like your biggest struggle working with this game and what was the ex most exciting part you did for this game? By far biggest struggle was uh, the entire honeycomb system. I believe I have ranted about this uh, for five minutes on end during meetings at times. Um, it was difficult because, uh, how do I say this? Bugs just kept popping up, just bug after bug after bug and I would have like some sort of implementation and I'd go like, this is perfect. And then I would like test an edge case and it didn't work and I had to restart the whole thing over. But once I finally solved it, it was number one, very satisfying. And number two, it allowed for pretty much the rest of the game to make itself. Cause after that making levels was just a breeze. I thought bigs were, bigs. I thought bugs were the point of the game, says Lorenzo. And then, uh, Peter, what was the most exciting part about the game while you were working on it? And what was the most challenging? Well, I, I primarily did the uh, music, which unfortunately hasn't gotten much of a spotlight. But I usually don't work with jazz instrumentation. I usually just work with piano art. And so large, a large amount of the music was just experimentation, what sounded right. And the hardest part was was trying to figure out how to extend what I already, what I had, how to extend the, se the uh, seeds of ideas that I could come up with into a more complete song. Could we actually hear a bit more of the music going on? Um, oh, can I could, you guys not hear? Uh, when it, someone it, talks, it gets covered, quiet. it gets masked. Oh, uh, yeah, I did quiet it, but I guess um, I would share If you it. want, I could share the audio. Let's do this. You hear it better now? Yeah. OK. okay That's okay. weird. It sounded pretty good on my end. Yeah, I really like the music. The music came out amazing. And then also on the uh, the uh, So uh, Tony, you're a little 
For me, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, it's mostly like working on it. I really never had the time to work on it. That's why Victor did honestly most of the work for this. Uh, I just kind of, I came up with the concept pretty much and then they ran with it. Um, but yeah, but it was very exciting seeing it come, across, uh, come along. I think they did an amazing job better than anything I could have made. But um. Yeah, it was really great experience just watching them work. All right. Thank you so much, Team 2. And then finally, we're moving on to our final team, Team Jordan. You guys had the Cells and Organelles game. Jordan? Uh, yeah. Uh, can you give me a moment? I, I just got to do something real quick. Yeah, there is two of me because I had to join on my phone because I had to go off for a little bit. Uh, let me just finish some up real quick and then I'll get to presenting. I was wondering who was the other Jordan. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. I, I might uh, need a little bit more time to prepare. So how about we have your team members tell us about your game? Or like, what's the? let's have um, Miguel go first. Oh yeah. I know um, he's actually saying he needs is, is Lorenzo able to share his screen? Yeah, I can just do it. <laughs> I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh could you share the screen? I could Yeah, yeah. You. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, so uh uh while we're unfortunately like not quite like finished, we have made considerable progress in the past uh week. Uh we um uh, our project is Pathogen. It's a kind of like Toho. It's a kind of bullet hell uh, sh uh, shoot 'em up game. Unfortunately, we uh, uh, we haven't an managed to get the wave system. But as you can see, we already have our uh, our uh, player moves, uh, our uh, player shooting, player movement, and we even have an enemy song system in place. We just need to actually set up a level, and uh, yeah, and. Uh, if you can show out uh, how the bomb enemy explodes. And uh, when you get hit by a bullet or an enemy, of course you die instantly and we have a life system set in place too. And uh, we, uh, we even, yeah, there you go. And then over if you switch to the copy test, uh, uh, we can uh, here, click on the kill enemy button and fill the bar. Uh, and we can uh, once this bar is full, which will fill when uh, which fills when enemies die. You can shoot a copy bullet, and the copy bullet will change how your uh, bullets uh, shoot. And you can uh, even stack powers by doing it. So if you fill the bar up again and then copy a different enemy. Right now we have the wide beam ability set up, but uh, if you hit this, we get the rapid fire ability, and we can shoot much faster. And if you shoot the bottom enemy with a copy ability then we can make it so that the shots actually pierce the enemies. Uh, we still have a bit of work to do, but we do have a, a lot of the assets and uh, programming done already. We just need to basically uh, build a level, I think, at this point. This is really cool. I, I really like the concept of the game. So even though you don't have much, in your game, I still think this is a lot of progress and it's not easy to do a bullet held like that, especially like that. <laughs> so uh, let's hear from, let's hear from everybody like one thing that was hard to work on and one thing that was exciting to work on. Starting with Miguel, then we'll go to, then we'll go to Lorenzo, who else is from your team? Oh, I'm still here. Yeah. And uh, we also had Sam, who provided assets as well. Um, but she isn't here at present. I think uh, 
Uh, for myself, uh, my favorite thing is, that I did here, the most exciting thing, is actually probably the uh, the bomb enemy. Uh, do you mind spawning? Do you mind spawning the bomb enemy more? Uh, the code that uh, made the uh, makes the bullets appear in a circle. I, I spent like I uh, quite a bit of time like reading through documentation, and when it finally worked, it was like only a few lines of code. But I was so proud. Of, I was like super proud of. Um, how I managed to do it. I think the hardest thing is that we did this project in Godot, uh, which is an engine that I was not familiar with. And I'm also not familiar with Python, but uh, as we kept, uh, uh, as we kept uh, working, I found, actually found that I like Godot better than Unity. And uh, while I still don't really know Python, I did do a lot of programming. So, so I feel like I'm very comfortable with, uh, this, with scripting in Godot. Thank you. No, the game looks really good. What about you, Lorenzo? Lorenzo? Ah, uh, hello? Hello? Hello. Okay. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm not used to screen sharing. Um, yeah, I really liked working in Godot for this project. Um, though the hardest part I'd have to say is like learning GD script, which is like the, the language for this. Uh, uh, for this engine because none of us really knew it. So we had to just go, or we just had to like look up a bunch of stuff and try to see what stuck. Um, like we realized like at one point that we didn't know how to how to make a for loop, which is like super basic. So we had to look that up. But um, I liked to, uh, what, what was really fun for me was like putting our heads together to figure out how the shooting would work and like how copying abilities would work. And then as always, I really love um, doing sprite work for the game. And this one was really fun because I thought the theme was really good that we had. Like all of the, well, Sam made this sprite, but I made like the death animation for it. And then I made uh, the enemies. So they're all based on like different types of pathogens. So um, I thought it was really fun to work on that and like, express my art through that. But um, yeah, I thought working in GD script was really fun for like learning. This looks so good. I really like all the different types of enemies and they're based on actual um, anatomical parts and different bacteria. It looks like you even have like a couple of viruses too. Looks this so one good. Is a, it's like a bacteria with a flagella, but I made it into like a ship. Oh, it looks so good. I think with a bit more time and work, you can actually have a full running game. Yeah, we're, we're you know, going to work on it and then present it more on Friday. Yeah, that's our goal. We're going to see if we could try to finish it by Friday or like have a working level at the very least. All right. So, Jordan, what about you? What was the hardest thing about this project? And then what was the most exciting part about it? A lot of it, actually, um, the part of the reason why we couldn't really get started until like much later, I feel like I didn't do a very good job coordinating. Like I just kind of like put things off and I didn't make it. I think you cut out. Jordan? I, uh, I think Jordan cut out. Uh, how about right now? Is it, does it sound okay? Yeah, you sound better. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll just reset what I did. Um, probably the hardest thing or why, it kind of explains why we couldn't get so much done until like later in the year. Uh, I don't think I did a very good job coordinating. Total, we only had about one meeting where we all just sat down and like decided on things. And that was like already like halfway through the semester, I think. And um, we, again, like, um, like Miguel said, we didn't really get much done until like, you know, last week. So that's kind of why we're behind. Uh, and I just think if I could do one thing differently, I, I try to be a bit more of like, not pushy, but like more on, on the, I'm not sure what, on the nose. On I'm the not ball. sure what we, yeah, on the ball. That's a, that's a good one. Thank you. Uh, on just trying to get everyone together and coordinated. And um, I also still feel like I didn't contribute as much as I should. Uh, most of, a lot of what I did, I ended up having to redo just because either I messed up and like saved things wrong or um, we started this out in C sharp, 
but then we switched over to GD script once we realized there's zero documentation on C sharp and Go. So um, rewriting all the player stuff is what, um, like the movement and whatnot, I did, and I had to rewrite that in GD script. And last night I made progress on like an enemy that I I messed something up when like trying to rebase and get. So I had to like write all of it, and I couldn't actually finish it uh, to present for today. But um, I do think like once we started getting the ball rolling, like Miguel was like a big push to our uh, development process is what I'd say. I'm not trying to like, you know, put down anyone else, but I feel like Miguel, like he just kind of took up the mantle and started like just doing things. And that just kind of like got brought us into gear and we started just like turning things out. And like, I'm really grateful for that. And um, once the ball was rolling, I think like just getting into, okay, this is what we're going to do. And putting everything together. Once you start to see the pieces come together, then it just starts to get like really fun. So yeah, uh, I think I've spoken for too long. <laughs> Sorry to hog all the spotlight, but um, yeah, that's, that's what it was like. And I hope next time, if I end up being a leader again, I could do a better job. All right. Thank you so much. All right. And then you guys can definitely show off your games. You can upload it to, you can upload it on GitHub and then upload it to our website so everybody can try out your game on Friday. So I'm really excited to see maybe more polished version of your games. That goes for everybody, not just Jordan. And we can try out a couple of your games during some free time. Because I know some of you are really proud of your work and excited to show off what you've made. Otherwise, we are out of time for today. Thank you guys so much for coming to our very last meeting of the year. And we're excited to see you guys, hopefully more in the summer too, because we're gonna, this won't be our last time seeing each other. I'll still hold some more events, not, a, and not as your president, but this time as your mentor. So we'll see more of you guys, especially for that Valorant competition. I'll meet you guys on the battlefield in a cent. So thank you so much, guys. I hope we'll see you Friday. No, Taeyeon. Have a good day, everyone.